Hello everyone, my name is Kurazar, and welcome back to the Vintage Story Guide. We are back in the world on a late summer day, and it's very weird, I actually went to jump through here earlier while I was doing some home improvement stuff, and I am not used to having to open and close these doors yet, but I am really enjoying the undergarden and all the improvements we're making to our home. And I should note, I came through recently and made a minor improvement here, where I had like a stack and a half of pine beams left. So I figured, you know what, let's add some vertical supports. And I think it really helps bring this all together. Like, it just makes this look more supported and sturdy. Especially on these corners here where I kind of felt like, hey, you know, we sort of just piled gravel up and expected to maintain a 90 degree corner. Eh, not so much. So now it is much better retained. Now, last episode, we spent some time putting together some new colors of books. And it hasn't been much time at all since last episode, at least in-game. It's been a few days since I last recorded, though. And so we are not yet ready to move on with any more orange dye, because our onions are still growing. But today's episode will have us hanging out up here a lot, so we'll be able to keep an eye on our onions. And we got some stage sixes going on here. Ooh, we also have some mature cassava. We could explore some of that today in between what everything else we're doing here. We could also take a look at this compost here, which is going to have to move because of what we're doing in here today. So I'm going to go ahead and take all of this out, and we're just going to stack some up, and we will make as much high fertility soil as we possibly can with what we have. Now, I saw a very interesting post by Tyron over on the official Vintage Story Discord, and that is that the roles of high fertility soil and terra preta are being reversed. So Terra Preta, as of 1.19 Review version 10, will no longer generate in the wild. Instead, it will generate high fertility soil. And we will have to make our own Terra Preta by making compost and then mixing soil with the compost plus charcoal plus some bone meal. And then we will to make our own Terra Preta, which is pretty exciting. On top of that, if we use the high fertility soil to make the Terra Preta, then we'll get a greater output, which is kind of cool. So hopefully we'll be able to have big fields of terra preta here in the future without having to spend forever searching and hunting and digging up dirt to find it. So I do think before we get started today with the main feature, check out these guys are still growing. I do want to take a look at cassava with you guys and show you how it can be used. So cassava is a bit of a special breed. Go ahead and break these here. We get a ton of cassava. And that's partly because cassava is both a vegetable and grain, but you cannot use it in its raw form. As you can see here, it says soak in water to make this edible. So we need to find some water and I might actually go grab one of the barrels I just put away. And let's just tuck this barrel like right there and we'll fill it up. There we go store the barrel underwater, pick it up, and it's empty. Huh, weird. So I think this is just a one-to-one, -one, but I could be wrong. Let's find out here. Hey, there we go. Okay. So after 24 hours of sealing, this will turn into soaked cassava. And then we'll have to do something with it. So we'll come back in 24 hours. Put the rest away down here. And let's talk for a second about this compost. Now, we could just use this as fertilizer. And that's probably, honestly, is of version 1.18 the best use for it. I think until we can make our own terra preta in 1.19, I think compost is sort of just best used as its, you know, intended purpose. But if we did want to, we could make here, supposedly, ah, right, we should do this. There we go. We could make 12 blocks of high fertility soil. So yes, that represented like a year's worth of rot in a barrel, and it took 20 days to make, and we got 12. So, pretty ridiculous, in my opinion. It does have a better fertility than medium fertility soil at 65%. And, of course, if you want to make it basically as good as terra preta for at least things like flax, you can use potash on it to bring that K fertility up to 80%. All in all, I guess it's okay in a pinch, but when you have terra preta, especially if you have a stack and a half of it sitting in a box unused, it really doesn't have much purpose, I don't think. So I'm glad to see some progress in that in 1.19. Let's just chuck you in here. I will never use that, honestly. 
So today's main feature is going to be this area up here. I want to basically finish this whole area up here. We already did the undergarden, and we finally have everything in this room down here sorted. I want to take these doors off because this is not supposed to be a an enclosed door. Although I might leave the doors and just leave them open. Just in case we have like a temporal storm or something where an animal gets in, we can close the door and deal with them later. But I want to turn this hallway into something that is actually a hallway and not like a bunker made of dirt. And I also want to come up here and do something about this ladder. This ladder has been a bit of a problem because we can't actually use it to get up to the top. And there are a couple things I'd like to do up there before we kind of like forget about it forever. So I want to figure out a way to make this traversable, especially just in case we have to like do any maintenance on our system up here. So I think we're going to turn this into a room of sorts and maybe even have some kind of interesting little like staircase going up to it from down here. And then we will find a way to build a ladder that will let us get up into and past these angled gears or these giant gears here. Now I have decided that I think over here and over here beyond the tower area is going to have to just be closed in and filled with dirt because I don't want to raise this dirt up much higher because I don't want to sort of spoil the view of this design here. So I don't want to do any of that and I don't want to chisel the dirt because it makes things get funny sometimes. And so we're just going to close this off and not do anything with this area ever again. Sad, but the truth. Now we will have a couple weird ugly spots here I think where we might have to raise it a little just to meet this area over here which doesn't please me all that well but we're kind of working with what we have and if I could have built this like one block higher boy would I hop in my time machine and go and do it. Now the decoration we're doing today is going to pretty much end about here because I'm not quite sure what to do with this area yet we might end up having some more room for another greenhouse or storage of some kind, or maybe some functional piece that I haven't thought of yet. Or even some kind of decorational thing. I don't know yet. But I would like to kind of start planning what we're going to do about this area over here, which will become our barns eventually. So I do want to have all three animal types. So we'll have pigs, we'll have sheep, and probably chickens way over here, just to keep them as far away from us as possible so we don't spook them. We will then eventually be getting rid of this because we already have another way down from inside our house. And that way we can just use the space for whatever we need to. I would like to have a staircase that goes up to somewhere up here and then up into that hallway. So a direct path through that hallway and down to here. And that will complete the sort of two level cross pattern we have. We have a hallway going that way in the house on the first floor and the hallway going this way, which would be north and south on the second floor with staircases at the far end, the middle, and this end to sort of connect the whole house together. So we're not going to enclose anything over here yet, but we are going to probably make some preparations and at least maybe lay out with some packed dirt, some shapes over here. I have decided that right here, this tool hallway is going to be wider than it is now. One, because with having a barn here and getting animals in and out, we would naturally want larger doors, right? That makes sense, I think. But also, I was thinking, like, if we have a tool hallway here, the farthest I can stand and pick up tools right now, or if I left it at this size, would be here. Which is fine, except that if we have another wall of tools over here to expand our collection, it might be really claustrophobic coming through here. And trying to, like, you know, not, like, cut ourselves on the sword hanging on this wall to pick up the pickaxe on this wall, it would be a mess. So this hallway is going to be four blocks wide at a minimum. And I think also at a maximum, because that's sort of the maximum, I think, for a hallway. So that's the plan. And because I have a big backlog of 20 questions again, I think what we're going to do is I'm going to close my mouth while I'm working, and I'm going to record my answers to your 20 questions, and then I'll play those over the montage of building. Since you already know the plan, you know what's going to happen. And that way you can just sit back, relax, listen to me answer your questions, and watch the build progress. Also, I was reminded today that this thing exists. So, yep, this is your reminder that the glider exists in Vintage Story. And that's all I'm going to say about that. It's all it deserves. Anyway, 
enjoy the build, enjoy the montage, and enjoy my answers to your questions. Let's get to it. All right, everyone, it is that time again. Well, we are working on our build in the background. I'm going to talk your ears off about some answers to your questions. So let's get started. Our first question is from Erebos. How realistic is Vintage Story in terms of ores, alloys, prospecting, and so on? Overall, it's pretty close on some things, especially the temperatures for smelting most materials, as well as the ratios of ingredients for alloys. There are a few concessions made for game purposes, mostly pertaining to being able to re-smelt steel bits in a bloomery. I can't really speak for prospecting since I have no experience in that profession, though. Professor Y asks, Have you ever heard of Mine Colonies, a mod for the other block game? And if so, what are your thoughts on it? I haven't heard of it before. Well, I've heard the name, but I know literally nothing about it. Domenicus Valiukevicius asks, Do you think you might do some kind of hardcore challenge miniseries, like a nomadic pole to equator journey? Maybe, but I haven't found any specific challenge that appeals to me yet. I also really enjoy building in Vintage Story, so having a throwaway game where I don't build anything isn't something that really tickles my fancy. Flavio M asks, what did you think of the most recent Dungeons & Dragons movie? So, um, <laughs> this is a bit embarrassing to admit, but I haven't seen that movie yet. Yeah, I know, I know. I am just too busy making videos for you guys and doing other stuff. It hasn't made its way to my priorities list yet, but I do want to watch it at some point in the hopefully not too distant future. Decaf Sax Guy asks, Are you excited for all the changes coming in 1.19? No, I'm quitting Vintage Story after 1.18. Okay, okay, I'm just kidding. As for whether I'm excited for all the changes in 1.19, well, the only person who likes change is a wet baby, as they say. There are some things I'm excited to see. The new ruins, new creatures, new blocks. The ability to catch some animals and move them. These are all really cool. There are some things, though, that I think might be a step back. I'm not a fan of the parchment style map, for instance. This might just be because I'm used to the admittedly cheesy and unrealistic map that we currently have, but there are some areas where I like to sacrifice accuracy for the sake of a playable game. Same goes for the new visible arms and things in first person mode. I'm concerned they take up way too much space on the screen. There's a reason that your arms in the other block game are way out to the sides after all. That being said, I'm willing to give all the new things a shot, and I'll be providing feedback both to you guys and probably to Tyron if any of these features prove to be a nuisance. Sam's Weird World asks, Does the frequency of copper ore depend on the surrounding type of rock, or are there any other factors influencing the frequency of copper? The answer to that is yes and no. Copper does not spawn in every kind of rock, and copper as a surface ore does not always spawn in the same kinds of rock as deep ore. For instance, you'll never find any native copper in limestone or in bauxite. However, you can find malachite, which is a different copper ore in limestone, but it spawns as a deep ore despite being quite close to the surface. However, in most cases, the type of rock generally doesn't matter as far as the probe is concerned, but some kinds of rock will host higher or lower qualities of copper and other ores. You can check these by looking through the in-game handbook. Nuclear Effect asks, How do you like the other block game's terrain generation as it compared to Vintage Story's terrain generation? I played the Caves and Cliffs update for a pretty serious amount of time in the months leading up to the first season of the Vintage Story Guide. Frankly, I think the terrain generation in the other block game is miles ahead of what we have here at Vintage Story. Granted, having such tall caves might cause strange issues like locusts spawning too high in the air to survive the fall, but overall, I would love to at least have some more interesting vertical cliffs, especially the edges of plateaus and other terrain features. Ambreen Ijaz asks, Will you continue the Vintage Story Guide Season 2 series into version 1.19? That's going to depend entirely on Tyron's release schedule. It does look like it's getting pretty close, and I would like to continue into 1.19 at least for a little bit, to explore the new features and content with our current tools, so we don't have to boost up ourselves through the early and mid-game to get to the point where we can enjoy the new features. That being said, it's probably getting pretty clear that we're getting close to having covered everything that needs covering in this season of the Vintage Story Guide. If 1.19 doesn't come out in the next month or two in a polished release, we might just have to punt. I do have some ideas for our next Vintage Story adventure on the channel after the season of the guide is over, so if 1.19 doesn't drop before that happens, then we'll just explore that content together in a new setting. Girish Manchinath asks, Are you going to Scarborough Fair? Only if they have at least a very few specific herbs and spices. Skelekid asks, Would you want to see some kind of primitive black powder weaponry in Vintage Story? 
That depends on how primitive and how realistic it would be made. Weapons that require 30 seconds to a minute to reload? Mm, not from, from a game perspective. They need to be worth the trouble and any related inventory slots. If a weapon that can deal half of a Nightmare Drifter's health can only be fired once or twice per minute, and then requires a lengthy reload, well, now you're stuck reloading instead of fighting Drifters, and that Nightmare probably has friends. I think I'd rather see something like a six-shot revolver or cartridge-fed carbine with like a three to five second reload time to balance the desire for realism with having a game that's actually playable. Nico's Vintage Story asks, Is it possible to make blue cheese in warmer climates in Vintage Story? I have no idea. Heck, I can barely make blue cheese in temperate climates. It would make sense that you couldn't make it in warmer climates. However, since most of my experience in Vintage Story is in temperate climates, I really can't answer the question. It's not readily available on the wiki or with a cursory search through the game's JSON files. Vera the Great asks, Do you think they should add more types of cheese to Vintage Story? As with any should more of X be added to the game questions, my answer is that if the new type or types serve a functional purpose, then yes. Since we can't actually taste any of the flavors in the game, adding more kinds of cheese or other things for variety and slight change to the color of the meal's appearance doesn't really appeal to me. But if cheddar cheese in the real world is impossible to make in, say, the desert, or if goat's milk, with goats coming out in 1.19, makes a different kind of cheese in the real world, then I wouldn't be against said additional options. K. Andrique Gilbert asks, What kinds of foods would you like to see introduced in future versions of Vintage Story? Building off of what I said a moment ago, I think there's enough general variety in foods that adding more options without a purpose doesn't appeal to me. I think if a new player was presented with 40 kinds of crops, it might be overwhelming. And I myself have been turned off by large mod packs in the other block game that introduce too many similar features, like foods, herbs, mob drops, and so on. What I could get behind would be seeing more foods that are specific to certain climate types. I want to see foods that you could only find in hot deserts, as well as foods that could grow reasonably well in the far northern climates. Plants like yucca or agave that you could forage in the desert, for example. I also think turnips and cabbage should be a little more cold resistant, and possibly be able to grow when it's slightly below zero C. Mr. Fatan asks, how many hours have you been playing in this vintage story world? As of answering this question, we are at 205 hours of play. Though, by the time this segment airs, that number will have changed a little bit. Tommy Duncanson asks, Have you and your wife ever remodeled any part of your house? If so, was it stressful? So far, we've only remodeled one powder room, and we're kind of still in the middle of doing it as we speak. But selecting materials and colors showed just how differently we approached the topic. For example, when I thought we had the floor tile section locked in, she saw something about the design we picked that didn't sit well with her, and it was something that even to this day, I don't quite understand. Oof Moof asks, What are your criteria for determining whether a Vintage Story mod is vanilla-like enough or not, when considering their inclusion in your series? For me to consider a mod for a vanilla-like series, such as the Guide series, it needs to follow these rules. 1. It must not introduce any new major gameplay systems into the game. For example, fishing, which is not currently in the game as of 1.18. Mods that add fishing wouldn't be considered. 2. If it impacts gameplay in any meaningful way, it must do so in a method that is not too powerful and at least somewhat believable. For instance, the Carry On mod expands inventory, but not too much, and larger boxes penalize your speed and hunger stats. If it allowed me to carry a chest with, say, 100 slots, I wouldn't use it. The Chisel Tools and Workbench expansion mods are in because while they make chiseling a lot faster and easier, chiseling is not a vital component of Vintage Stories for all gameplay, and lets me actually build cool things in a time frame that's conducive to making videos. Number three, it must not create processes that are long and complex. This kind of goes hand in hand with not introducing new gameplay systems, but since this is not a modded playthrough, any mod that takes more than a couple minutes to explain generally doesn't make the cut. And lastly, well number four, mods that introduce new blocks to build with are not included, though in some cases mods that modify existing blocks but only in minor ways are vanilla-like enough for me. All right, everyone, we are back. I hope you enjoyed my answers to your questions. And as always, if you would like to submit a question, then make sure you leave a comment with a question and make sure you use the hashtag 20 questions, or you can submit them over on the 20 questions discord channel on the server. But let's take a look at what we've got here. I think I'm pretty happy with what we got here and in here for the most part. There are a couple foibles that I would like to address and one of them is the obvious this this roof the ceiling because I didn't really plan out that far ahead I put the ground level here a bit too low I put it one block too low in fact 
And for that reason, we, in order to cover up that dirt, we had to put a sliver of something there. And I went for larch, just to sort of keep the bright wood going on, and to give us a roof that feels a little bit less claustrophobic. It still does feel claustrophobic, but I think less so. And I hope you'll agree. Now, I'm a bit happier with how this turned out. And again, we probably shouldn't be up here a whole lot. There's not much going on here except for the fields, the greenhouses. But if we do want to go up here and maybe put something in here, maybe we want to, I don't know, break something off of this spot here and maybe put our corn in here somewhere, it's a possibility. But I came in here and I dressed up some of the walls here. We can all have sort of flowing arches rather than just like pieces of wood and the back sides of the roofs. I could come in here with the windows, you know, and actually, do we have any more walnut? No, I think I could come in with some walnut here. And we could take a leaf out of the book from last season and do a bit of a walnut window trim on the inside. Because as much as I like the redwood, well, you know what? Maybe we do redwood instead because it's awfully earthy in here. I think redwood might actually be the better option. Let me get some. Okay, here we go. Let's put our lantern down so we have some light to work with. And these are already chisel blocks. That's pretty easy. And let's go ahead and oh, we're going to need some more redwood, I think. I had calculated based on how much walnut we would need since these blocks already have walnut. And let's just see how this looks with a bit of trim here. In the last season, we did a lot of windows at Lupine Ridge by doing a bit of this. Make a bit of an eye shape. And we go two sort of voxel bits, so basically half a block out. And then, oops, we wouldn't break the window. We do something a bit like this. Oops, don't do that. But yeah, we do a bit like that, and that would be our window sill, our window frame, in fact, the whole thing. I think that works out pretty well and helps it stand out from the rest of the room by being bright and cheery. I think I'm gonna do that for the rest of these and I'll fix that window frame outside here too. And with the power of editing, we now have three completed windows and this one is fixed on the outside too. I even fixed a goof that I think has been there for a very long time. So probably never noticed it, but there was a small goof there. Now we do need a light in here, a permanent one. So I'm gonna go ahead and pick our light up and we're going to drop this one probably just like right here, which will help illuminate this room and some of the stairs and walkway down here. Now I think we should largely be safe from most spawns. Again, because we're only spawn from rifts anyway and rifts now, we can get rifts near our house, but I think we're mostly okay. So, this ladder. This ladder is a bit of a pain. And, unfortunately, in the vanilla game, there isn't a whole lot to do about that. So, we're going to look beyond the vanilla game and to a mod. In fact, it's one that we've been using this whole episode. That is the QP Tech Chisel Tools mod. And we're going to use and make a tool we have never used before. We're going to make it before we use it. You see, the geniuses over at QP Tech have invented a ladder maker tool. And we're going to go ahead and make one of those. And let's make it out of... Well, may as well just do steel. Not much harm in that. And while that is going on, I'm also going to... Oh dear, realize I'm out of bronze. And we're going to make a... Let's do a copper lantern for up in the top of that tower there. All right, so let's go ahead and get our plate going on here. We'll turn you on and walk away. And you, let's see what this ladder maker tool looks like. Here we are. Steel ladder maker. Looks fairly simple to me. And our plate is done. Turn you off. So the letter maker does not require a haft of any sort, which is good to know. Go ahead and tuck you in there, cool you down so we can use you. 
and swap you for our copper plate. Which made no sound, apparently. And we will go ahead and make our lantern. So we're prepped. And I'm going to grab some... I'm thinking slate. Yeah, let's do some slate for this job. And what we are going to do is we are going to find out a couple things. One, we're going to grab some junk blocks like... Let's get some chert cobblestone. Because I want to test how small of a space we can squeeze into. Because what we're going to do is we're going to use a ladder maker to make some fresh ladders. We can turn basically any chisel block into a ladder. As far as I'm aware. There might be some rules that we'll discover along the way because I have not perused the resources on this entirely. But in theory, we should be able to, say, chisel out a block like this with the hammer in our offhand. I was totally about to say, you know, and chisel this guy, bust this thing down, probably use you to squish you a little farther in. And so we can walk through here. Now, let's find out how thin of an area we can walk through. It's actually quite thin. Okay, so it ends at half a block. So that's one voxel wide, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And that's when we can no longer walk through. So six is our minimum space required. I don't think we need all of this. I'm thinking we're going to shave this down to a single voxel wide. We're going to add a secondary material. In this case, we'll use probably walnut as our, our base here. And then we should be able to just chisel in some little rungs like a ladder. So we can maybe come in here and do something a bit like this. And then maybe have something like popping out maybe like this and run it across and there we have a pretty rudimentary ladder but it is like built into the wall and if we take this ladder must have at least eight voxels. Okay. So let's go ahead and click on this. We now have a ladder. Check it out. Now what we can do here is we can actually copy this form and then paste it onto the blocks up there. And I'm going to probably have to take out this part of this ladder and we will hang it or rehang it from this side of this block here. Oh no, we're going to hang it from here. I'll do the ladder all the way to the floor. Now, in theory, all we should have to do is fall to our death, is right click that to chisel it. We're going to grab some slate rock. I'm going to add it to this block here. And we'll get back to the floor. We're going to copy this block. Now, what's going to happen is we have chert as our first material and the wood as our second. In here, we have the sandstone as our first material and the slate as our second. So what should happen is that, except I didn't want this to be open like that. Hmm. I did not think about that very much, did I? I don't see the harm in just bringing this part of this wall out to here and having one little more thin layer right there. So let's come down here. We're going to rebuild this out by pulling this out the whole way across the block. Making sure we do turt instead of wood. And then we will just use the hand planer to bring all of this up. There we go. Let's snapshot you again. And we'll try again like that. Perfect. Perfect. Now, we can ladder this guy. Bang. It is a ladder. And so now we're going to be able to do that with basically all of these blocks here. And we'll probably need to bring our lantern with us so we can actually see 
probably move it every so often. But the idea is I'm going to chisel, well this one's already chiseled, we're going to go ahead and add our slate. We're going to paste that, and then we're going to ladder it. And we can get rid of this guy. And that will give us basically an access hatch or an access ladder the whole way up, and we'll be able to put a lantern in the top of our tower so we can see it at night from a very long way away. All right, and just a few minutes later, we now have a maintenance ladder that takes us all the way to the top of our windmill here. Note to self, build the windmill interior at least 5x5 five five next time. So yeah, we can see the top here. I'm not going to put a floor in because that might encourage things to spawn up here. What I am going to do is I'm going to drop a fence post system and we're going to just hang our lantern right there. Now in theory, if we can get out of here fast enough and get far away fast enough, we might be able to back up and see the light in our tower. Yeah, look at that. See, it's lit up from inside. It'll be a nice beacon when we are coming home from the Chert Desert over that way, or maybe from across the lakes over that way, or maybe from the bear-infested south. Okay, that was a fun little detour, I think, and I am going to leave this lantern here to illuminate that. I do need to make some more lanterns, but I need more bronze first. So let's then talk about what's going on here. I thought it would be nice to do, well, to have options, really. We're going to put some stairs in here to bring us down to this level here. And I might just do like half slab stairs, a nice gentle slope, and that'll bring us out here. Now, this area, I don't have any plans for, like I said. This could just be grassed in, grassed over, dirted in, grassed over and then not do much with it. Have a bit of a, like a walkway above our house if we wanted to, that could be interesting. But then this would give us an access over to the barn if we were on the second floor without having to go down into our house and down all those other stairs. We could come right down into our barn area right here. And we would have three sections. We would have a section for sheep, which is the largest pen. You'll see that I've made it larger than the other one. I normally like to do like a 4x4-ish four four size for my very first sheep or pig pens and then kind of double it but only in one dimension because I do still want to have a walkway maybe either around the edge or through the middle or even both that will give me access to the animals. Because sure, you can slaughter and pet and milk them from here but if they're all bunched up somewhere and maybe one of them's angry at you so trying to charge at you it can be tough to select the right animal. So I like to be above them. Over here, we'd have some pigs, and you'll see it's a bit smaller, mostly because of the staircase, but pigs I find don't need as much room because you're usually only slaughtering them. You're not trying to milk them, and they're also smaller, so they take up less space. Then back here in the back, we would have the chickens. And as you can see, I gave them a little bit more space. These are, was a six by four here? Yep, six by four. So yeah, I think it's a pretty good use of the space. We will probably end up putting dirt back in here because I don't really have any plans for anything over here and I don't really see a need to try to fill it. It might be neat to have our barn kind of like fully underground and like out of sight, out of mind. Maybe just a little bit of like a roof popping up, like just a sod roof kind of just in the middle to show that there is some roof there. If we wanted to get crazy, we could even do like another skylight. That could be kind of cool too and give the animals some actual sunlight instead of just lantern light. And here, of course, we will have our nice wide tool hallway. And we'll probably have a secondary back door or probably a two by four gate here. And probably, honestly, two two by four gates here and at the end. That way we have a nice big gate to move all the animals through and get them into their pens at long last. And that will, of course, be interesting. Although moving domesticated animals is generally a bit easier than moving wild ones. Lastly, at the far end of our hallway, of course, we have a little hobbit hole entrance. And I actually really like how this turned out. Like, I was concerned that just this teen tiny entrance with the circle on it might look funny. But honestly, I think it looks more hobbity than any part of our house so far. So, yeah, I think that works out pretty well. And we have, of course, our sod roof here leading up to the cob. I'm not sure why some of these aren't growing. I don't think they're, like, chiseled blocks or anything. Let's find out. Are you chiseled? 
You are not. They're just taking the merry time. I might replace some of these with some low fertility soil because I think that tends to grass it over better. Especially like in places like this, the cob is just doing nothing. In fact, there's some cob like this. Cob from ages ago that is going nowhere. And a random block of dirt should no longer be here. But let's back up and take a look at the new backside of our house. And yes, okay, we're going to need to do something about that. But I am officially out of the aged planks. Oh, I have those logs. I have those logs. So I'll probably patch that up with some stairs under here just to give it a nicer interior slope. But I like having that depth. And I thought it'd be fun to put some peridot in there just because. <laughs> I thought it'd be nice to have a different color and a different texture than the gray of the granite here. So yeah, I think that works out pretty well. Oh, and before I forget, we have some soaked cassava here. It is halfway dried already, which is not great. So we have a couple options. We can let it dry. I'm not sure what happens if we dry it before peeling it, but we can just peel it with a knife. As you can see, it becomes a vegetable. And it will dry in six hours. We can go ahead and eat it like a vegetable. If we let it dry, however, it'll become a sort of like a dried grain. We can grind it into basically flour. And it's probably what we'll do because there isn't much point in keeping this around and trying to let it not dry. So I'll tuck this down in our grains storage down here if I have any room whatsoever. Ah, barely. And in general, I recommend that with cassava, your best bet is going to be to take it somewhere like a chest, such as, I don't know, here, and letting it rot. Bye. It is honestly just too much of a pain to work with because you have to know 24 hours in advance of when you're going to be using it and then make sure that you use it very quickly once you have soaked it. So it is not my favorite thing to work with. Well, everyone, that is going to about do it for the episode, however. I hope we enjoyed our little build today. It wasn't a huge space, but a kind of a good bit of engineering went into it to make it work. And it's still pretty claustrophobic, but there isn't much we can do given that tower needs to be one block higher. Anyway, if you enjoy what I do around here, let me know by leaving a like or let me know what you think in the comments. And I'd love to have you subscribe if that's your thing. But as always, my name has been Korazar. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.